everybody and welcome to the first episode of the new graduate podcast and this is an opportunity to hear from some of AIT's graduates that are working both in Ireland and across the globe and today I'm delighted to be joined by civil engineering graduate Stephen Keegan. Stephen you're very welcome to today's first episode. Hey Dan thanks very much appreciate it how are you keeping? Yeah good thanks Stephen good so Stephen I suppose to started let's talk a little bit about you know you you graduated from AIT in civil engineering you're now working in Australia can you talk to us a little bit about maybe your time at AIT first um, and some of the maybe some of the um, modules and, and and subjects that you studied as part of your course in AIT absolutely yeah yeah so I studied in AIT from uh, 2001 to 2004 um, I like I suppose I'm, I'm from Tuberclare which is just outside Athlone um, and after I completed my leaving cert, I always had um, an interest in civil engineering uh, and all engineering for that matter. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a, an option for me to either choose between Limerick, Dublin, Galway, and I actually clo- chose my hometown of Athlone, AIT, to attend university or, or, or college first. So um, absolutely never looked back, never regretted it. It was fantastic. Um, I was heavily involved in, in show jumping horses at the time, and it was a great opportunity for me to uh, focus on my, my, my horses and competing in show jumping around Ireland, and also to be able to, you know, five minutes into town, and uh, I'm attending lectures from Monday to Friday. So a uh, great opportunity. Um, as I said, never look back. Uh, you know, I'm here, what, maybe 16, 17 years later. Um, I'm still a civil engineer, project manager, uh, working in Australia, and yeah, has done me the world of good to uh, attend AIT. Excellent, excellent. So let's go back in terms of, you graduated from AIT, you mentioned 2004. Can you talk to us about some of the, you know, um, job projects you worked on after you graduated? Um, I know before we went on air, you talked a little bit about working on the Athlone Town Centre. Um, talk to us a little bit about maybe some of the projects you worked on after you, uh, after you graduated. Yeah, so I was pretty lucky also not to attend college in, in AIT in Athlone, but uh, I also was my first employment after graduating was on the Athlone Town Centre project. Um, that project lasted for over three years. And you can see today the, the significant impact it has on the town. It's, um, you know, has brought the Sheraton Hotel, has brought all of, you know, I think there's 55 retail outlets there, uh, apartments, underground car park. Um, you have the tallest tower in that loan, um, and a four-star quality hotel. Um, so I was pretty lucky to be exposed to a lot of construction. Um, I was working for the developer Gallico at the time. And um, yeah, it was it was absolutely beneficial for starting up my career to delve into such a, a immense project very early from the start. Um, I mean, did all aspects of civil engineering and construction at that. Um, and definitely a lot of my courses that I, I covered in the IT was pretty beneficial to me and prepared me for the world of work. Um, following that project after three years, I, I uh, started working Again, on a very local project, uh, it was the Glass and Ballycairn Coosan sewer scheme. And that was a sewer scheme that brought all of the waste mat- uh, material from Glass and from, from Coosan, from Drummacan, uh, into the, joining up the, the network, the sewage network in Athlone. Uh, so that project also lasted around three years. Um, and I had a few of the water schemes, like around Cavan, Longford, a few areas and projects like that as well. Um, and then I decided, I, I actually went to Australia in 2008 to play AFL football for a while with the Irish national team. And I got to see what Australia was like at the time. I really loved it. Um, and then I said, let's apply for some jobs in Australia. And yeah, just made, made the call to go for maybe six months, a year, see how it go. Um, and I joined a company called McMahon. McMahon were a huge mining company at the time. Um, and this project behind me right now that you're seeing is called the Solomon Rail Spur Project. Uh, so I was taking on a senior project engineer for the drainage and infrastructure works for this project. Um, it was taking all of the iron ore is brought out by trains from the mine sites to Port Hedland. 
and you can see the rail track here behind me and it's it's going we actually had to blast out a mountain that's only a small escarpment of that mountain behind us but it was uh, like a 150 meter uh, peak mountain we had to actually drill and blast through first of all to take the embankment level right down to the rail formation level um, that was a huge huge project um, in the middle of nowhere a lot of the projects over here are remote projects uh, a lot of the projects you have to fly up to site uh, you might spend two weeks on site and one week off they were in the construction phases um, so that, that was a huge project for my first project in Australia getting to know new systems uh, working with a diverse construction background I mean you literally were working with every nationality around the world um, you know and then it's it's huge remote sites um, the terrain is completely different to Ireland the temperatures are completely different so you're you're thrown in at the deep end really and it's it's just you know every day is different that's what I like about civil engineering no two days are the same um, so yeah that's that was the first project that I was introduced to and from there then I went to a project up in Port Hedland which is sort of at the northwest of, of Western Australia uh, that project was um, it's called the Great Northern Highway Realignment. I mean, you're talking about projects between ranging from 100 million to maybe just under the billion dollar mark, um, and it's significant for your CV. But it's the skills you learnt, you know, in the AIT that you can all, always relate back to. Be it surveying, be it project management. Uh, there's a lot of maths there as well. Um, you know, it's it's procurement, uh, contracting. Uh, accountancy it's everything that you've learned the basics uh, from doing your cert diploma uh, degree in the IT that, that helps you you know be it 5 10 15 20 years down the track uh, so another few projects I'll just throw on the screen behind me uh, quite significant ones is, is this is a, a road bridge we did over a rail line and this is in part part uh, CBD itself so um, a lot of civil engineering it's got to do with planning. Uh, so you're ready for every single scenario when it comes to the, the construction phase. So behind me we have, uh, it's pretty hard to see there, but there's a road and it's 60,000 cars passing in each direction every day. So it's the main thoroughfare, that's, that's the, you know, the bypass, let's say, around Part City itself. Uh, and the volume of traffic is increasing year by year. So main roads, which are the government body over here, um, they wanted to extend the number of carriageways and with the effect we had to extend the bridge that was going over the rail line um, by putting on additional four lanes of traffic. So we had one weekend to install the tear off beams which are the beams going over the bridge and there was months and months and months of planning to go into that one weekend shutdown. Um, I mean if we didn't hit the targets you'd have an impact on cost and schedule uh, you know, for the locality itself, for locals going to work the next morning after after the road reopened, um, and everything because it was planned. We had the procurement, we had the, the cranes. You can see some of the pretty large cranes there. There's 750 cranes, uh, four of them lifting in beams and sliding them across, putting them in a position, um, and it was a pretty successful weekend. So that was a that was a pretty good milestone in my career for. Uh, it was my first project with Main Roads as a construction manager, and uh, it was pretty successful. Uh, I'll just go through another one or two projects quickly just to give you an overview. This is another bridge, um, and this is up in its place called Wheatstone. It's a LNG plant, and this creek was usually the road level is actually where the, the level of the water is, but the creek used to fill up and that used to impact. It was the main thoroughfare for all traffic going to site. Um, so we had to install this uh, six span bridge. And that was a project where most of our workers had to fly to site. So it's an hour and a half north of Perth. Um, and the workers used to fly up to site for two, or two, two weeks on and one week off, or a three and one roster, three weeks on, one week off. Um, so that was very remote, very challenging. You're talking about between 40 degrees on, a, on an average day. Uh, working in sunlight, so you have to manage your workers' fatigue, uh, hydration levels. Uh, then obviously you have to, you know, look at their mental health as well because they're away from their families from for three weeks at a time. 
as I said, pretty remote, so you wouldn't have pretty good, you know, coverage uh, communication wise. And then they're staying in Dongas, which are temporary residents up there. So it all depends how good the food is and how morale of workers are the day after. Um, so that was another successful project. We, um, by, by doing such a good job on this project, it, it won us a lot more contracts with that current, that, with that company I was working for at the time. Um, and then I decided to move to a different company, which was actually um, the government of Western Australia. And they had a lot of infrastructure projects in the CBD. Um, and one of them is a $2 billion, uh, it's called a Forest Field Airport Link project. So it's bringing, you can see behind me there, it's a tunnel born machine. And that tunnel born machine was in a dive structure, which, which will actually drill um, a distance of eight kilometers from the airport into part CBD. So that was one of the most significant size projects. Um, I mean, you're drilling under people's houses, you're drilling under rivers. Uh, it's something very similar to Dublin Port Tunnel, only it's uh, for a train line to bring passengers from the airport into the CBD. Um, so, I mean, it's one thing with civil engineering is that you get great exposure to these projects. Um, and it's, as I said, every project is different. I never had experience in, in, in bridges before I went to Australia. And um, I would be pretty proficient now in, in any type of bridge. We had a bridge in Perth recently, it was called a Charles Street Bus Bridge. And again, you can see behind me there, it's a main thoroughfare from Perth. Uh, we had to design it in a way that we couldn't impede the traffic because you had over 100,000 cars passing by on a daily basis. So it was a launch bridge. So we constructed a bridge to one side and mechanically pushed it across on, on rollers uh, across the main bridge itself. And that's, that was a fascinating construction. Uh, I was working for the client at the time, Main Roads, um, and due to that work, again, it's a good rapport with Main Roads, the government body, and same with Public Transport Authority, which is uh, look after the buses, the rail systems, the ferries. Um, so that from there, then I was able to, you know, expand my horizons, and um, I joined Rio Tinto, which is the largest uh, mining and minerals company in the world. Um, so I've been engaged by them to manage all the infrastructure projects uh, for Western Australia. And infrastructure projects could range from, I mean, power line relocations for the mines, um, airstrips, airports, uh, roads, rail. So I'm currently working on a project which is um, it's in excess of $100 million. Uh, I'm the project manager for the project, and it's currently in uh, pre-feasibility stage. So we've gone to our, our client, which is Rio Tinto, uh, who I work for, and we had to do an order of MAG, so project initiation, to determine it, the go ahead for this project or not, um, because you need funding from the business to spend you know, $100 million to make sure this project is gonna be beneficial to the mines at the end of the day. Uh, so we've proven that, we've gone through a preliminary design which is called a, a pre-feasibility study. And now we're just engaging consultants, which are civil engineers, uh, to carry out the detailed design of the project itself. So it's, you know, in, in my role, it's fantastic to be able, you're able to see everything from project initiation right through to project delivery. Uh, actually bringing workers on site, uh, getting in you know, with the concrete steel, um, the, the asphalt itself, and you can see a project from being designed on paper to signing off the paper, signing off the project at the end of the day and um, it, it creating new access to new mines, which is um, advantages to Rio Tinto then. Brilliant, brilliant. So Stephen, that's, that's a fantastic overview in terms of you know when you graduated from AIT and exactly what you worked in both regionally and internationally. Uh, very fascinating overview. Um, Finally, can you give us a little bit of a kind of, I suppose, advice for any student that was maybe a Leaving Cert student at the moment that was considering studying civil engineering um, and was a little bit uncertain about, you know, uh, what the course is all about or what the career paths are all about. Any advice for them um, in relation to your experience of the course and your career to date? Absolutely. Um, I would say to any civil engineering uh, potential student is that 
there's so many aspects to engineering. I mean, you can go on to do electrical, mechanical, chemical, environmental, uh, health and safety. It all relates to engineering and civil engineering. Uh, civil engineering for me is why I chose it is because it's more broad. There's a lot more uh, factors to it. Um, you know, you, by, by choosing my path for civil engineering, I was able to progress onto uh, overseeing so many diverse projects. If I just focus on electrical or mechanical, you can really just focus on mechanical type projects or electrical type projects. Um, I would definitely say I've, I've really enjoyed my time uh, to date. Um, you know, there's a lot more projects out there that I'm gearing up for. Um, if, if and when I do move back to Ireland, I think I can bring a wealth of knowledge from around the world. Um, and I would advise any, any student, leaving cert student, that 100% uh, consider going to the AIT for your, your degree course there. The fantastic facilities. Um, some of my best mates today, you know, nearly 16, 17 years later, are lads who I met uh, and people I met in the AIT. Uh, I've a great rapport with all of my lectures. You know, you have a lot of guys there who I meet every time I go back to Ireland for Christmas or weddings or whatever else. You're always bound to see one of your lecturers out who show a genuine and keen interest in your career. Uh, they have been, you know, absolutely uh, so supportive. You know, you can chat to them just like normal people. Uh, they want to see you progressing in life. Um, yeah, and I would 100% recommend EIT. Brilliant, brilliant. Stephen, thanks so much for joining us for today's episode. I know there's a different time zone between us, so I appreciate you uh, tuning in at this late time. Uh, and yeah. I really appreciate it, and I wish you the very best in all your future projects. Yeah, no problem at all, Dan. And all the best for EIT. Thank you.